top story today, President Trump is back in Washington after a whirlwind trip out west. Just a day after his divisive rally in Phoenix, the president delivered carefully scripted remarks before the American Legion in Reno. He called for unity and signed a bill making it easier for veterans to appeal decisions on their disability claims. And the White House is pushing back against rumors the president and Senate Majority Leader are feuding. The tension reportedly began after President Trump attacked McConnell for the Senate's failure to overhaul Obamacare. Both leaders issued separate statements yesterday saying they remain united on shared priorities. And there is a winner, a single winner in the big $700 plus million dollar Powerball jackpot. But bad news for you though, unless you bought a ticket that from a small town just outside of Boston. CBS's Seth Lemon is in New York with more on the golden ticket. That first number up tonight is seven. There is a winner for the $758 million dollar Powerball. Lottery officials say the ticket was sold at the Handy Variety convenience store in Watertown, Massachusetts, just six miles northwest of Boston. Population 33,000. There's only a single winning ticket, meaning unless the buyer was part of a pool, one person or family can claim the entire prize, a scenario players all over the nation say they've dreamed about. I'm going to Disneyland and then I'm going to buy me a private island down in the Caribbean. I'll drop you a postcard sometime. It's still early, but the winner hasn't yet made him or herself known. For many players, if they were holding that golden ticket, they'd prefer never to go public. Well, I would like to stay anonymous anyway, because I don't need you to know I got some money. <laughs> Bad news, though, if the winner was hoping to stay out of the spotlight. Only six states allow you to not come forward if you're holding the big ticket, and Massachusetts is not one of them. Seth Lemon for CBS News. And the chances of matching all six numbers are one in 292 million, those odds haven't always been so steep. In 2015, the Multi-State Lottery Association changed the game in an effort to generate more sales by generating more massive jackpots like this one. Well, thousands of students across Billings are heading out the door this morning for their first day of school. Class is back in session for Billings School District 2. Sophomores, juniors, and seniors get an extra day off and start tomorrow. So here's a reminder, slow down and be extra observant while driving in school zones. Superintendent Terry Bauk reminds the public, excited students will be happy to see friends and teachers and may not always have their eyes on the traffic. Another reason for excitement, the opening of the new Ben Steele Middle School today. A ribbon cutting will take place along with other festivities. Ben Steele's wife Shirley is also expected to be in attendance to see the opening of the school bearing her late husband's name. Well, universities and colleges across the state are also gearing up for that first day. Cars were lined up Wednesday morning in Bozeman as Montana State University welcomed students back to campus. The welcome crew for first-year students included Bobcat mascot Champ and the MSU cheer team. Classes at the University of Montana in Missoula begin on August 31st. As for Montana State University in Billings, classes don't start until Wednesday, September 6th. And Rocky Mountain College right here in Billings kicked off its first day on Monday. Now in news out of Huntley, a fire broke out at a trailer home causing significant damage. Firefighters from Huntley, Warden and Shepherd all responded to the scene Wednesday morning on Rocky Cliffs Trail south of Huntley. The home was unoccupied and when the fire broke out and no injuries were reported. The fire's cause is now under investigation. Elsewhere, a set of bizarre circumstances sparked a wildfire near Great Falls that burned an estimated 40 acres. The fire, located north of the Missouri River along Rainbow Dam Road, was apparently caused by the misfortune of a hawk that was carrying a bull snake in its talons. Take a look at the video. Here's what's left of the hawk and the snake. The Black Eagle Fire Department says the investigation determined the hawk had just caught the snake. As the snake struggled to break free, it touched a near by power line, which then sparked, sending a current through the two animals, killing both. No buildings were burned, but several utility poles were damaged. Multiple fire departments responded and were able to douse the flames within an hour.
Meanwhile, Montana Fish, Wildlife and Park biologists are on alert after numerous dead fish were found in the Yellowstone River. Official test results won't be back until next week, but authorities are concerned. It could be similar to last summer when a microscopic parasite killed thousands of whitefish and suckers in the Yellowstone. Fisheries manager Travis Horton at FWP Region 3 in Bozeman says right now there isn't enough information to determine if the fish deaths are disease related. FWP staff floated downstream from Livingston this week and counted a total of 75 dead mountain whitefish, two dead suckers and one dead brown trout. Last summer's outbreak of proliferative, proliferative kidney, kidney disease, or PKD, led to an emergency closure of the Yellowstone and its tributaries. Anyone who sees dead or dying fish in the Yellowstone River are asked to contact FWP at 994-3155. In other news, a horse in Yellowstone County is the first equine case of the West Nile virus in Montana this year. It happened in the central part of the county near Interstates 90 and 94. The assistant state veterinarian says the horse will make a full recovery. West Nile virus affects people, horses and birds and is spread by mosquitoes. About 30 percent of horses with West Nile will die. There have been no confirmed cases in horses that have been vaccinated. Over the last couple of years, we've seen um, cases extending into October even. And so if a horse has not yet been vaccinated for West Nile, um, we think that it's still worthwhile in looking into getting that vaccine um, and still trying to get some protective immunity um, into the animal for the duration of this year's mosquito season. According to the Department of Livestock, about six to 10 horses a year contract West Nile in Montana. On to health news. The first and only FDA approved heart failure monitoring system is doing its part to keep a Billings woman alive. Brenda Logan became the first patient at Billings Clinic to receive a new procedure and technology designed to help manage heart failure. The Cardio MIMS HF system helps manage heart failure by allowing medical staff to monitor her condition daily with the goal of catching potentially deadly failures long before they begin. For Brenda, who was diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder that attacked her heart, the new device provides a sigh of relief. I knew that it was always right there, that something terrible that happened, and I'm hoping that this little darling will take care of this, that what's happening, if it's bad, will be caught ahead of time. It doesn't require a huge amount of medical knowledge to be successful with it, um, and we are able to, to track uh, changes before symptoms start and bring them back down with diuretics. Inserting the device is actually an outpatient procedure, so you leave the hospital on the same day. Four more patients have received the device since Logan became the first. Thank you.